Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. What we do on this channel is review online listings for 80 series, 100 series, and 200 series Land Cruisers. And we do this in order to identify common issues that pop up on these vehicles as they age. Uh, we do it to make sure the sellers that are listing these and selling these are being honest and being upfront and uh, disclosing everything, at least that we can tell. And finally, we do it because, yeah, I'm an enthusiast for these things. Um, if you're in the market, I think these discussions can be helpful, can better inform you. And yeah, ultimately, hopefully save you a little bit of headache. So let's go ahead and look at this 2007 uh, heavily modified uh, 100 series Land Cruiser. Uh, yeah, it's almost got a like an LX 470 look to it with these headlights. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a it's a Land Cruiser. But heavily done up. We will not spend too much time on all of the modifications. Just here's the disclaimer: modifications are both good and bad. They cost a lot more than you know. Obviously, the value you get out of them, and then just having people right whether they're qualified or not and uh, you know adding things working on things you know putting things on the vehicle can sometimes cause issues so just keep that in mind not saying that's the case here but uh you know many hands on a particular vehicle yeah sometimes can screw stuff up but uh, this one's being sold out of Morgan Hill, California, just nearby down the road. It's got 161,000 miles. Uh, I should also note that this one, yeah, was um, yeah sold on Bring a Trailer in June of 2021. So we've got a yeah, two-year hold. Uh, let's see. It's got air locker differentials. Uh, yeah, presumably ARB. Uh, it's got black paint. Uh, What's kind of interesting doing a little bit of research here, you know, I wanted to make sure and check the name for the black paint. Uh, this is what the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum has. They call this color code 202, which is what's on the VIN sticker of the vehicle we're looking at today. Uh, they call, they, they've obviously got an issue here, but anyway, just don't take everything that you see on the internet as truth. Yeah, they call both 3Q2 and 202 as black garnet pearl, good grief, in, uh, in, in their little table here. It's just black. No, uh, yeah, no, nothing fancy about it. So it's just black. Anyway, it's got a um, suspension lift kit, 35 inch tires, some Hutchinson wheels. Uh, it's got the stone leather upholstery. So that's going to be that kind of um, kind of grayish color. It's got, yeah, I mean, all the stuff. Well, I'm sure we'll go through that in the in the detail. But yeah, heavily modified by, um, I think, the seller before this. If you look at the little thumbnail here, uh, it was yeah, pretty much modified uh, at that point. So those are the details there on the right. Let's go ahead and just go through the text here. Uh, so this line cruiser was first registered in California and spent time in Oregon before the seller's acquisition in June of 2021. Uh, it's got the 4.7 liter 2U ZFE. Uh, that um, yeah, is a well-known, well-regarded uh, engine, has a timing belt. So that's going to be you know something we're going to want to ask about in this. The truck was refinished in black and modified under previous ownership with ARB air lockers. Uh, uh, 35 inch Nitto tires, 17 inch Hutchinson wheels, the suspension lift kit, ARB bumpers, a worn winch, a rooftop tent, an awning, auxiliary, auxiliary exterior lighting, a ham radio, and a multifunction rear view mirror. So, all of those things, there's, I don't know, I'll go out on a limb here and please, somebody, if, if it's not already been done, please ask what this thing weighs in at. Uh, I would be surprised if it's not already over GVWR before you even put a human being in it. Um, in any case, it's got 161,000 miles now, and it's got a clean Carfax report and a clean California title in the seller's name. So I'm curious with the low mileage why it would already have required a repaint. Uh, no description there. Um, but yeah, there's all the stuff, rigid and ARB intensity auxiliary. Like this just has all of the stuff that, you know, all of the overlanding people need. Uh, let's see a dent on the left quarter panel is shown in the gallery. I uh, I don't see it at least from this far out, but we'll, uh, yeah, we'll try and verify exactly where that is. And then the suspension is an icon vehicle dynamic stage three suspension lift. Let's see, nice leather there in the inside. Uh, it looks like it uses an S-Pod, which is kind of, I don't know what the technology is, but it, yeah, it's essentially like a relay, but it uses more or less, I think like wireless communication or maybe some smaller low voltage wires to get the switch uh, inside um, the cab. And yeah, and then all the relays and everything is, you know, up in the engine bay. So kind of a nice thing. I haven't actually installed one before, but yeah, supposedly they're really nice. And then there's also a multi-function multi rear view mirror. Um, 
yeah, I think those things can be pretty cool. And I think there's some photos in the gallery, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, the rear cargo area has been fitted with ARB storage drawers and a mesh divider and barrier. So again, all of the overlanding stuff. So in the last two years, only 5,000 miles were added. So pretty low the usage during that time. Oh, and I am not digging that tray. Yeah, how do you get the, uh, maybe it comes off, but how do you get this uh, engine cover off without pulling that tray off? Anyway, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Looks like the oil was changed in June of 2023 and the seller notes that the SLE battery extensions were replaced. Uh, yeah, so funny enough, this uh, this particular seller is active or semi-active on I Hate Mud. Uh, there is a little, I think, for sale thread there. But definitely, if you're interested in purchasing this, go through that poster, right? That that forum member, go through their post history and see what they've said. Um, sometimes that can, you know, yield interesting information about yeah the vehicle. Uh, kind of interesting the the way that the slee is cut here into this battery. It's backwards, right? It's upside down. Anyway, uh, let's see. It's got slee skids underneath. It. So that's the way the logo is supposed to look like. But yeah, it's backward. <laughs> I'm trying to think how you would orient that. Like, there's no other way to put it. So uh, it's just backward. I don't know. Or maybe it's supposed to look right when you hold it up. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, we've got, uh, it says here that the front center and rear differentials are fitted with ARB lockers. That's probably incorrect. The front and rear differentials are probably fitted with air lockers, and the center is the original uh, Torsen uh, unit that comes factory on these. And the seller states that Nitro Gear 488 to 1 gears are fitted front and back, and it's got a Borla muffler. Uh, Carfax report shows no accidents or other damage unless history in California and Oregon. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out the Carfax report and just make sure things are copacetic there. And yeah, so originally sold into the Bay Area, California, uh, maintained at Stevens Creek Toyota. So if you are interested in picking this up, looks like there's going to be a handful of records um, in the Toyota system. And then this SNS tire and automotive repair in Sunnyvale uh, appears that they reported quite a bit as well. Uh, so, so yeah, and then one service in Sonoma, what happened to wheel alignment? I wonder if, uh, yeah, something happened while they're on the road. In any case, it's been, I went to Oregon in 2018, just prior to the current owner picking it up. And then, yeah, they brought it back down to the, uh, kind of South Bay area in California. So this thing should have, yeah, not had much corrosion on it with that life in California. There's, uh, especially in the Bay area. I'm obviously not expecting much, if any, corrosion. However, yeah, there could be some, um, yeah, there could be some like paint and sun exposure. So we'll we'll look for you know things of that nature, and you can watch me struggle <laughs> try to type in. Oh, I typed it in wrong. Oh no, it's hard because I like the microphone's right in the way, so I can't see anything, and I type like a chicken. Did I screw it up twice? No, I didn't. All right, there we go. Let's put this into vehiclehistory.com. Just see what we come up with. Not expecting much. And sure enough, there's nothing. So that was a big waste of time. Sorry. All right. There are some videos, so be sure to check those out. A little walk around, a couple interior videos, startup and revving, and an engine idle video. But we are going to focus on the photos because that is what we do. All right. So... The first thing, besides all of the modifications that are quite overwhelming, <laughs> in my opinion, uh, the thing that kind of caught my attention was just this little like uh, bug guard. Uh, it doesn't look like the you know the Toyota bug guard, but uh, yeah, you know, it's there. Hopefully, we get a better photo. And it looks like they've replaced the front grille with um, yeah, kind of this you know Toyota stuff. I wonder if there's a there's a guy was it Kelly Sad or something Kyle Sad. Um, yeah, he not only would he paint Land Cruisers, and I think he still does actually, but he, um, yeah, he makes like a custom grill and stuff. But I thought he was doing that for the LX470 and not for the Land Cruiser. But this kind of looks like something that he he was working on. And then I think we see in the driver's side rear that little dent. Yeah, it's super minor. You know what we should do to fix this dent? We should drill into the door jam of the rear quarter panel and the rear door here in order to pop that out. That sounds like a good idea, right? Now, that's why I am so against paintless dent repair, because you're making it worse by drilling a hole in your car. All right, moving to the front of the car. Yeah, it looks like it's got kind of like an anti-glare thing. I mean, this thing... Uh, is yeah straight out of uh, yeah straight off Instagram, <laughs> but it looks cool. Yeah, looks like it's yeah super overloaded. Uh, those tires yes yeah, certainly are nice and beefy. Those are Nittos, right? 
Uh, hard to tell how much tread's left on them, but it looks good. I'm, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, yeah, black cars, but, uh, I mean, it looks, it looks pretty good. Let's zoom in here. Just seeing a little bit of, um, you know, kind of white, you know, color here could be dust, could be something else. Uh, one other thing to note is that this trim, right, this kind of belt molding, this would have been a different color originally. So that was obviously repainted. Uh, it is kind of good to see a little bit of like a white outline around these door handles. So that's going to give us an indication of how good of a paint job was done. And we'll continue to look for, you know, signs of yeah, bad, bad paint as we go through this. Uh, I don't know, I'm a little peeved that the... Uh, <laughs> the, the recovery board is kind of like off kilter, but I do appreciate that the spare tire is on the correct side. <laughs> yeah, there's that ding in that rear quarter panel. Yeah, it looks, it all looks pretty good. Let's, let's see how, what type of hardware they used here. Uh, yeah, it looks like this stuff, you know, it's kind of powder coated, obviously, but yeah, it bugs me when people don't use stainless steel hardware here. Uh, it looks like a little ding here in this little plate that houses these rigid lenses. Um, as this stuff ages, uh, the powder coat fails, right? As you get rock chips and stuff and ends up kind of like falling apart and looking like, tr looking like garbage. Uh, they just, it doesn't age as well as the, yeah, the factory painted body, but you can see this thing's got a couple scratches and yeah, kind of no surprise there. Um, and just a really interesting little vent or, uh, yeah, kind of bug deflector there. I'm, I'm curious, um, yeah, where, it, where it came from and you know, kind of what the, what the purpose and benefit is, but overall, yeah, looks fine, I guess. Um, yeah, looking here at the rear quarter and the tail light on the driver's side, that looks fine. Just a little swirl in the paint. And then, yeah, just to the idea that I just shared about the powder coat on this stuff. Like look at this little antenna bracket. So there's like a couple of different issues with the design. So, you know, how important is it to put a little bottle opener in this? It just kind of ridiculous. I know like, you know, you're supposed to be like an overlanding bro and, you know, always crack a beer every time you stop. But yeah, I don't know. It seems excessive in any case. Yeah. The paint, whatever, you know, coating that they put on this, it's clearly failed. Uh, it's not in not formed in a way that is conducive to yeah the way the hatch and the body lines are so and i know we don't get to see the top of it but that this part of the body it kind of you know not like it curves but it kind of angles and so you could imagine it looks like we've got some different rubbing issues going on here um back to the idea about the uh it being some just white spots here around this kind of um, belt molding here on the passenger side recorder um, yeah, not sure what to make of that. It looks like something's kind of dripping down through here too. Um, again, could just be dust. Uh, kind of cool to see the ARB bumper. It looks like it's relocated the, um, yeah, that backup camera. So that's a nice touch. Yeah. And there's your Borla exhaust. Yeah. I'm not going to spend too much time. Do not look directly into optics when the, uh, when the light is operating. Yeah. 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 All right. Same thing. Ditch lights. You know, it's, I don't, I don't know what's necessarily going on here without seeing it like in person, but to me, either dust and dirt has accumulated there or the way this bracket is, it's rubbing against the hood and it's kind of chipped away at the, um, at the paint, uh, hard to tell exactly, but it could be one or the other or yeah, something totally different. And then, yeah, it looks like they've got some, yeah, some wires running up here in the, in the channel, which is all kind of, you know, fun and games until you've got to replace your windshield. Yeah, interesting. I wish somebody would yeah, clue me in on this uh, little bug deflector. It's interesting. Yeah, other than that, yeah, this it's all just done up. It looks fine. Uh, I'm not sure if those are bugs or if they're all chips in the windshield. Uh, it does have the little visors, the WeatherTech visors. And then, you know, back to the idea of how good of a paint job. Yeah, at least they um, it didn't paint over the, uh, the gaskets around the doors, those door handles. Those look good. All right, moving to the wheels. Yeah, those are fancy wheels. It's kind of cool that they, uh, yeah, they take the factory cap there. That's kind of neat. Uh, would like to see mud flaps on the front, but yeah, it's just my personal preference. Yeah, this is kind of neat. Kind of cool that they got them paint matched too. And yeah, I presume with the bolts that those are like a true yeah bead lock. So that's that's kind of cool. Uh, it looks like this thing's been used pretty good. There's a little bit of dirt still on parts of the body. 
And yeah, there's your, looks like they integrated it with the, uh, yeah, the triple locker switch. Not sure what visual indications it gives. Um, yeah, it's a good, good question. Uh, that's one advantage to like the 98, 99 is that there's a light for the front locker and the rear locker in the dash. There's a spot for it, which is kind of cool. All right, they've got um, you know, some other, not quite sure what this particular interface is here. It looks like maybe it's related to the uh, different lighting systems that they have. Um, but steering wheel looks actually really good. So back to the idea of maybe it being repainted because of sun damage, not, not seeing a whole lot. Um, maybe a little bit of fade on the seatbelt receptacle, but it actually, you know, from this angle, looks pretty good. Um, yeah, carpet looks nice. Uh, looking here at the driver door, that seems to all be in place. Looks like they've replaced the lights with uh, LEDs. A little scratch on the um, the glove box, as you can see there. And yeah, they're using the tape deck to mount, yeah, maybe some sort of radio. But all this looks yeah, pretty, pretty mint and pretty fresh. Looks good. And this is a pretty good... Um, Especially these later, you know, like 06, 07s, as they uh, they kind of went away from that like bluish gray and went to like this kind of stone color. Yeah, this is this is probably one of the best looking interiors. Now, if you can find this without the the navigation unit, yeah, that's that's nice. A little bit of a shame that the little plugs here for the uh, the grab handles are missing, but uh, passenger door card, yeah, that looks good as well. Yeah, no signs of paintless dent repair there. Yeah, it looks fine. And yeah, the interior here looks good. There's a, it looks like perhaps this lower part of the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, where your, I don't know, knee plate or the lower part of the dash that's not sitting quite where it could be. I can't remember if there's a bolt that holds it in or a screw that holds it in right there. Uh, it's also a possibility. This is uh, something I think was on one of the hundreds that I had. Um, yeah, the clips that hold this in, yeah, they can sometimes, you know, if they aren't, put in just the right spot yeah they can um yeah they can kind of bend and fell and you know won't secure long term but yeah this looks pretty good steering wheel looks great uh you know i know i <laughs> kind of bitch and moan about all the touch surfaces but they all look really good in this truck that would bug me a little bit that uh this is <laughs> like a little off off kilter but uh yeah those that little switch is for the lights it looks like and but yeah 160,724 miles uh, that photo was taken with the engine off, so yeah, nothing. And you can really see that um, lower panel kind of pulling away there. So something worth looking into if you wanted it to look uh, the way it should. Yeah, so it looks like they've got an aftermarket cup holder kind of inserted here, and then yeah, a little 3D printed, you know, deal. Not sure exactly what you would put in there, or what's what that's intended for. Uh, also, oh, it's a fire extinguisher, so that's that's nice to have there as well. Uh, moving to the second row, yeah, this looks really nice and clean. Nets are sagging on the um, the driver's side, of course. Uh, that is some super dark tint on the, that rear window. Uh, that looks good. You can see a VIN sticker there. Uh, I think that courtesy light's on. Yeah, it looks fine. Just some minor little marks on the door. Just some light scratches. Yeah, nothing too big. Yeah, there's maybe there's a chance that this courtesy light's not on on the... Uh, uh, the passenger side rear door. Um, those LED lights, they are you know, kind of notorious at yeah, not lasting very long sometimes. Uh, moving to the underside here of the driver's seat, uh, they've got stacked floor mats. That's a big no-no <laughs> from Toyota, but you can see how this uh, yeah, lower panel is not sitting quite where it should. Nice mount for the uh, yeah, for the fire extinguisher there. Headliner looks good. And then, yeah, here's this multifunction rear view mirror. Yeah, kind of cool. Uh, looks like it can do a, lots of different things. And uh, I'd be curious to see how they you know, wired that in. But yeah, if that could do like navigation and all that, that'd be, yeah, that'd be pretty neat. All right, so it's got, uh, I can't remember if this is a truck box thing, but yeah, of all of the different covers for the rear tailgate, yeah, I like this kind of padded one. There's one that's made out of just like a, a, a I don't know, like a polycarbonate or something. Yeah, that, that um, I think mountain hatch makes it. Yeah, my experience wasn't great with that one. This one seems to be a little bit better of a solution. Um, but yeah, you've got these ARB drawers in here. They aren't my particular favorite, but probably because I uh, cheaped out and bought it used and it was probably already broken and I just kind of <laughs> fussed with it for years and years. Uh, I will say the top of this drawer here on the pass, or excuse me, the driver's side does seem to be a little like bowed in. 
Uh, so just something, maybe a big heavy load was yeah placed there on the rear. But yeah, lots of little Velcro stickers. And yeah, based on how, I don't know if I would put anything particularly heavy up uh, up here. Although it does have the support there on those uh, third row grab handles. So maybe it can handle a little bit of a load. But yeah, lighter stuff up top. But that's how you'd load your vehicle anyway. Uh, yeah, truck box, truck box confirmation. Uh, yeah, I think if I buy a 100 series, I'm going to get one of those. Um, yeah, it's nice. All right, moving to the engine bay, we can see a VIN sticker on the passenger side. And yeah, not still not digging this uh, this mount here, but whatever. But you can see you've got an ARB air compressor here. You've got an auxiliary battery there. And there's lots of auxiliary wire, wiring going on for all the different lighting and yeah, things like that. And then remember, we've got a winch up here. So that's what some of this stuff's going to as well. And they've got kind of like the heavy duty um, battery terminal connections you can see there. Um, VIN sticker on the driver's side. And oh, almost caught the VIN sticker on the hood, but I'm sure it's there. I'm really curious why why this got a repaint. It's fascinating. Uh, yeah, lot lots going on with the wiring. I will note that the main engine wiring harness has fallen off the perch. Could be because the clip is broken. Um, but yeah, get that sucker either zip tie it or buy a new buy a new mount there and yeah, get that thing so it's not flopping around. You don't want those wires um, yeah fatiguing out on you. And then yeah, this is the S pod thing. Yeah, look that up. It's it's a yeah pretty interesting, pretty interesting solution there. Okay, so before we get to the undercarriage photos, we in looking at all these engine bay photos, we didn't see a single. Oh, there is a timing belt sticker. What does that say? That was so small. Okay, so it looks like 112 something thousand. They really should have provided like a detail shot there. Um, but yeah, let's say it's yeah done. You know, in the last you know like 40,000 miles or so. So. That's, yeah, that's a good sign. Uh, it's not in the description, not in the write-up. So, uh, but yeah. All right, moving to the undercarriage, we have sleeve skid plates. Looks like those are yeah pretty much full body going all the way back to the fuel tanks. So that's covering the transfer case, transmission, and the front of the engine. Uh, also protecting your catalytic converters too, which is, yeah, which is good. Uh, frame, at least in this shot, looks yeah, it looks just fine. Not seeing any wetness in the photos as well. I uh, do see a little bit of mud, but that's, uh, yeah, it just means that this thing's been used. Uh, let's see. So this bracket uh, holding, this is the brake line, right? And this is the, yep. So you've got a hard line coming over from the passenger side. You've got a hard line coming over from the driver's side. And they, they kind of join together, right? There's a T. And then they, there's a flexible line going up to this uh, cross member here, this uh, kind of rear cross member. Uh, you, can, you can see there's a bolt missing out of there. So that's something you would want to get done ASAP. Um, if you're, especially if you're doing like washboard and corrugations, um, having the, this, this hard line here that you can see here, having that thing being able to flex back and forth, that's going to fatigue that out. I have, I've had that exact same failure um, on a front right caliper on an FJ Cruiser. So definitely get a bolt. Uh, it's probably just a, you know, a 12 millimeter headed, uh, I don't know what the diameter would be, probably like an M8 bolt. Uh, get that sucker. There's, you know, probably on the side of this cross member that you can't see. Yeah, there's probably a, you know, threaded uh, hole there. So get that in there as soon as possible. Uh, you can see the little, the blue cord here. This is the, um, what do you call it? The airline for the ARB locker. But yeah, definitely get that done. That's like a legit safety concern. Get that taken care of ASAP. All right. Uh, there's your color code 202. The LA-10 is the, yeah, I believe the stone interior. And yeah, for anybody that's curious about the weight, go ahead and take a, uh, yeah, just the curb weight 100 series and go ahead and add on all the modifications and uh, in the comments, let me know <laughs> what the, what the total is and whether or not it's below 6,925 pounds. I'd really be surprised if it is, but all right. So this is good to see. So yeah, this is the uh, Yoda MD little key fob. Those are great. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like just only one key is included. Uh, yeah, this is an auto home tent as well. That's, you know, got a value of, depending on exactly what time it, it's hard to tell whether or not it's, um, there's two types of this particular tent and this looks like a, the variant model. Uh, there is a carbon fiber one, but it's usually like a shorter one. This fills, you know, that's, that's the, the shorter model. Uh, in any case, this is either painted or it's the car carbon fiber one and that would kind of dictate the value, but you know, got a street value of anywhere from, you know, like, I don't know. 2000 to 
you know, 3000 bucks, something like that. Um, yeah, those are nice. Those are pretty nice tents. I have had one of those and yeah, I've enjoyed that as well. But yeah, good looking setup. Looks like it uh, is quite capable, uh, if not a little heavy. And yeah, you'll have to ask, you know, they provide all these photos. You'll have to ask how much of this stuff's actually included in the cell. But yeah, there's your build sheet with all of the uh, aftermarket goodies. And yeah, we're back out front. So yeah, interesting to see where this one will end up. Uh, just a reminder, two years ago, so kind of not at the height, but you know, pretty well into uh, you know the pricing craziness. Yeah, this thing sold for forty eight thousand five hundred bucks. I don't really see that the condition has changed that much to you know to to take it down. I mean, only five thousand miles have been added. Uh, so yeah, my thought on price is that it'll probably go pretty close to it. It's so heavily modified. That's what's causing it and it's also a late model like 2007 so if you were to think of a 2008 that were modified like this yeah n nobody would really be batting an eye that it's you know 40,000 bucks or so especially if it were you know 160 something thousand miles so I would like to see it sell for a little bit less just you know to <laughs> maybe depreciation will be a thing in the future so I'm gonna yeah kind of bet let's say like low 40s so i'll say 43,000 that's my guess um there's a chance that you know you might get a couple people that are interested in this like specific build and you know they could argue whether or not um you know you could reproduce this exact vehicle for 43 or 48,000 dollars and yeah maybe they get into a little bit of a bidding war um so we'll see where it ends up but yeah pretty pretty good looking truck overall um definitely it's got a, got a lot of stuff going on and yeah. Anyway, that's this one. I uh, appreciate you checking out the channel and hope you have a great day. Take care of yourself.